Hi there folks, my name is Novawing24 and here we are in a first impressions and review video of Aerofly Flight Simulator 2, so Aerofly FS2 Flight Simulator. I don't know why they've got the superlative flight simulator, but you know, never mind, that's, that's what they've got. So yes, Aerofly FS2 Flight Simulator, okay. So, um, alright, bit of history here quickly before we get started. Aerofly have been around for a little while, the guys over at IPAX, um, they're the guys behind uh, Aerofly, um, they also do, uh, they've also done a couple of uh, RC, uh, remote control aircraft uh, simulators as well. Um, now their first Aerofly flight simulator um, was set in Switzerland, and you were restricted just to the area of, uh, to the geographic area of Switzerland and the immediate surrounds. Um, this time, um, they're saying that it's the American Southwest, um, so it's, you know, the California, Greater California area, which is interesting, um, and seems a little confusing. So, this has recently released on, uh, Early Access on Steam, so we're going to be having a quick look at it today. So, this is a couple of days after release, they haven't done any updates to it yet, uh, this is the one that they've got so far. So, we're going to have a look, um, at... This, uh, this this possibly new flight simulator and see what it's like. All right, f initial first impressions from when we first log in. So this is an iOS port. I'm going to call it straight up right there. It is just just from looking at it. Now having done the research as well, yes, it pretty much is an, uh, an iOS port. So FS2 um, has been around already for about 18 months on iPad on and on Android. So for sorry for iPad, well for iOS devices and for Android devices. So um, having it come to PC it was kind of like okay, cool. You can bring it to PC. That's dangerous when you're coming from an uh, a mobile application. But sure, you know, let's let's keep an open mind here and let's have a look. All right. So first off, let's start with some settings. So we go into the settings here, and you can see from the just from the layout, it's very much designed for um, for a, a touchpad and a touchpad device. All right, so very basic settings. You got general controls and graphics. All right, so general is all right. That's it. So we've got uh, invert camera control. Um, we've got flight information, hide or show. Uh, we've got the approach guide. So essentially, this is your glide slope coming into uh, major airports. Uh, so it's not on every airport, uh, but it is on um, all the major ones, the major runways. Uh, I'll leave this switched on for now um, so that you guys can see what it is, uh, but you can change that to either all off. Uh, active, uh, which is if you enable a flight plan, which we'll get to in just a moment, um, or they're all on. Okay, so landmarks is essentially whether or not you see the, um, you know, specific 3D models of you know, specific iconic things, uh, such as one particular landmark, which we're going to go pa go past in our first test flight here in a moment. Transparency of control elements. So essentially, this is a holdover to the days of the iOS kind of things, um, where you can actually control it from simply you know clicking on the uh, mouse and sort of dragging uh, controls on the screen, uh, and this controls to the how transparent they are. All right. So and then the overlay is um, is whether you hide the show. So um, very similar these two, but yes, they are there. All right. That's it for the general. All right, moving on into controls. Now, controls, you're fairly limited to what controls you you, you have and can rebind. Um, however, the way they've done it is possibly the best thing I've seen. So, uh, primary controls, for example. So, we've got here your throttle. You can expand that out. Okay, so you can... One of the the big issues that a lot of flight simulators have is that, and and this applies equally to the ESP Ranger products, so FSX P3D, um, and as well onto DCS World, uh, that you can only use a control input once. That's it. You, you can only use it once, um, unless you buy you know some somewhat expensive third party software. So it's really great to see that it, this is natively support multiple rebindings. So I can rebind my throttle axis, so as you can see here, I've got um, various controls set up here, and it's and they're all color coded. 
So I've got my SciTech uh, X55 Rhino connectors, which has got the uh, stick, the throttle uh, as well. Then I've got the Xbox 360 controller and a track IR. Now I can assign multiple axes and value. I can solve uh, an axes to multiple do multiple things, which is going to be really useful because unfortunately, as it is in uh, in other ESP in in ESP based platforms, you can only assign it once. That's it. So there you go. Uh, so this is really really good to see. Um, then you've got here you can see elevator, aileron rudder. So just your basic ones here. Uh, and then through our flaps, so again you've got a primary control and then you've got a secondary control as well. Unfortunately there's no way to unbind it, which is possibly the only issue I have um, with the controls, is you know, if you accidentally bind something, you can't unbind it unless you bind that key to something else, it will always be on that, which is a bit annoying. Uh, and there is no just reset controls button, um, reset back to default, which is again little annoying so as I said they've got one thing right the rest it's not right um, okay so yeah we've got our flaps here and then we've got uh, left wheel and right wheel brake so that's fine um, little annoying that you know you can do things to uh, you so sometimes you rebind it sometimes you can't like for example you can't have I can't have a second control on my uh, on my Rhino stick to actually trigger both brakes. It has to be on a separate controller. Uh, and then we've got the air brake. Now the air brake uh, is uh, so that's not all aircraft have got that, but the air, the ones that do, uh, they've simply it's simply a press and hold. So it's not a it's not a toggle. Uh, it's a press to use. And uh, this can get a little frustrating a bit a little bit later on. We'll show you a bit why. Uh, so we've got and we've got uh, propeller speed, thrust reversers. So you can assign the thrust reversers to axes, or you can assign them to buttons. Elevator trim again, same kind of thing. Um, a problem that I've got though is that with repeat, there's no way to set the repeat of the keys. So uh, in other sims, you can sort of set them. You know, if you press and hold it, it'll repeat whatever. Um, what I've noticed is that if you use the keyboard command, it will repeat. Uh, when you hold it down quite quickly as well but if you set a, a button on a controller it will not repeat you have to depress it multiple times which when you're trying to trim an aircraft can be really frustrating but anyway that's fine but either way at least we got the multiple multi, multi button support all right then we've got uh, so I assigned these so the adder on my rudder trim I've assigned these to some axes uh, so you can see them just testing there there we go rudder trim go Dun dun dun! All right, steering tiller. Haven't figured out what that one is for yet. What particular aircraft that's for yet? But there you go. Uh, as you can see, it was, so we just use our test our controls there. Yep, everything working fine. Now we'll only be using uh, single and twin engine aircraft today, uh, but you will have. But I would have to, for example, rebind that uh, for the four engined aircraft. There you go. Okay. Now what I will do though. I will. Let's see if I can rebind this. I can rebind this one. Okay. So let's go. Alright, so to increase our propeller speed. Let's go F3. Bring it down. Let's go F2. So again, just pay attention to the the plus and minus because that's what it is up and down. Um, it's sort of a bit, you know, not clearly labelled, but again, it's nice that you can actually rebind a lot of this stuff as well. So there you go. So interesting that they've got four propeller speeds. So that means obviously at some point there will be uh, more aircraft with four propellers. Uh, in at the moment we've only got twin props. All right, moving on from the controls. Now that we've got our controls nice and set up. Our viewpoints. Viewpoints work very very similar again as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, you cycle through your internal views using the one and two, follow views three and four, external views five and six. Um, we'll go through those once we get into the sim itself very shortly. Uh, zoom again. You've got your uh, keyboard commands. You can assign this to an axis as well. Currently, I don't have a spare one, so I haven't got to assign that to an axis. Uh, you can see from the look there, you can see that it's uh, picking up my track IR perfectly fine there as well, which is nice to see. 
pan, same kind of stuff. Um, the pan is a little jerky, I find, though. It's not very smooth at all. Um, it sort of just does its thing. Um, this move section, though, is not very functional at the moment. It doesn't seem to pick up on any commands, which is a bit annoying. So uh, that one is, uh, is, uh, is out of uh, bounds at the moment. All right, autopilot. So it's a very basic autopilot. Um, it won't fly a nav plane. Um, so it will, but it, you can use it to select uh, your speed hold, uh, heading hold, and altitude and vertical speed. So you can adjust all that on the fly, uh, and you can also adjust that uh, in some of the virtual cockpits. So again, we'll get to that to a bit more shortly. So I've just set mine to uh, autopilot master A, so that'll automatically engage and disengage it there. And then we've got the heading mode, vertical speed mode, selected speed increase and decrease, and uh, selected heading increase, decrease, and selected altitude for that one there. Oh, I should probably make that. That one should be Q. There we go. Okay, cool. There we are. Right, there you go. So yeah, it, it simply to simply rebind is simply click on the slot you want to rebind and press the key. Very simple, very easy. So rebinding, pretty simple. All right, so uh, navigation. This allows you to uh, adjust the uh, course uh, knob of the, your uh, your instrumentation. Um, again, I haven't assigned that one as yet. Just waiting on that one because I've got to. I want to. Uh, I want to show you a few other things in here. Lights. Now, exterior lights, you for the most part, you don't control. Um, so you only really control the panel instrument lights. Uh, I haven't bound these because I want to show you some of the virtual cockpit features as well. So there you go. So we'll uh, leave those one out unbound for now. But again, it is, seems to be compatible with a lot of controllers, which is nice to see. Um, so you will be able to uh, set a lot of stuff there as well. Alright, and finally we've got the game controls. The game controls, so this is essentially the more, you know, uh, interfacing ability bits as well. Um, pause, yeah, pretty obvious what that is. Flight information, you know, hide show, so this is, uh, show, we'll see some more of that in just a moment. Uh, moving map display, essentially it's a shot of Google Earth um, showing you where you are and a couple of things overlaid onto it. Quick lift up, uh, so this is basically for gliders, uh, so, or if you just want to quickly change your altitude. You can quickly change your altitude just by uh, using uh, by binding that to a key. Uh, there is no tow aircraft uh, for gliders, so just so you are aware. Uh, changing time now. This is not simulation rate. This simply changes the time of day, and visibility just changes the visibility of the conditions that you are currently in. So, um, no way to change the simulation rate. The simulation is fixed at one at the uh, just uh, real time speed. So, just so you're aware of that one. Okay. So we've got our controls all set up there. Now graphics. And it's basic. Again, as I said, <coughs> this very much shows the fact that it is an iOS port. Uh, it is very basic. It's got your presets and scroll through your resolutions, you know, and that's kind of it. It really is. It's 1920 or 1080 or windowed mode. That's it. That, that's all it does. It's either full screen or it's not. That's it. There is no resolution settings beyond that. Graphics quality, you can customize these ones, but we're going to leave this one set on ultra uh, for that one, because uh, as I said, yeah, there are some things these guys got right. And that's it. That, 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 that's it. That, that is it. So uh, not a huge amount of options in the settings there. All right. Let's go through. So options here, start. So start is when we're ready to fly. You just click that and off you go. Uh, now, bear in mind, it remembers where your aircraft was and what it was doing and what state it was in when you last closed the app. And I am going to start calling this an app, not a simulator, because it really feels like one. Uh, so yeah, that, that, that will just completely kick you straight to the aircraft and off you go. Now, flight school is a series of missions. Um, we're sort of just training, just basically teaching you how to fly. Uh, we might cover those off. Uh, we'll cover those off. Uh, sure. We, we, uh, yeah, we, we'll, 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 we might cover off a couple of those lessons uh, later on. But we're gonna we're gonna do for a, actually. You know what? Let's let's co we'll, we'll cover the flight school first. But I want to show you some other features before we get into it. All right, aircraft. So this is where you choose your aircraft. All right. So you've got a reasonable number of aircraft to choose from. So your basic Cessna 172. Um, by the way, uh, the the wording here 
it's not it doesn't flow right so they haven't localized this the english lo the english localization hasn't been done properly yet um you know also mention skyhawk as it's also known as a skyhawk but you know uh, yeah, little, little things for that uh, it gives you a little brief little history on the aircraft um you can so you scroll through just using the middle mouse or wheel just scroll through to find to the new to different aircraft that you want uh and then just use these ones here to actually choose a different uh, color scheme for your aircraft so some aircraft you get multiple color schemes on, some aircraft you don't. So, as I said, Cessna 172, fairly basic. Then we've got the uh, classic uh, birdcage uh, Corsair. A Learjet 45, so uh, in uh, very beautiful looking Learjet, the, the model-wise. So a couple of different color schemes there. Extra 330, so not a 300, this is one's the 330. Um, so this one's the more aerobatic one, not the uh, not the racing one. Then we've got uh, the uh, perennial F-18 Hornet. Uh, so uh, this one's pretty much uh, come straight out of uh, Aerofly's uh, first flight simulator because that was the primary aircraft in that one. Uh, and you do, yes, yeah, and you do get the Swiss Air Force scheme is still in there. You get a NASA one, Swiss Air Force, digital camo, Blue Angels, of course, and the Marines, the US Marine Corps. Pit Special, um, just absolutely beautiful aircraft. This one is, I love it. Uh, great to see it in a simulator. Um, one of the gliders, the Margansky Mar Swift S1, uh, is included in here. A couple of liveries there, nice Jepson one. Uh, Amaki MB339, this is good, it's kind of cool to see the, the Amakis in here. Uh, two skins that one for the UAO one. Yeah, I, I kind of like, I, I've, always, I've always had a soft spot for, uh, for the Amaki uh, MB3 um, series, I always have. P38 Lightning. This one, I was a bit surprised they put this one in, but it, it's uh, yeah, and this this one's featured quite a lot in some of their screenshots, uh, which is nice to see. And uh, yeah, so they, they give you a nice uh, raw twin engine power there from Lockheed. Baron 58 again, nice little uh, commuter uh, twin. Uh, so we got that one there, and um, it's it's pretty cool. So it, it yep, nice to have a, a little twin prop in there, twin piston prop. All right, and of course, for those who love their uh, jetliners, we've got the 737-500, this one. Uh, so this was one of the uh, the mid-range models. Um, California one, Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines get a couple, gets a couple of schemes. You get all sorts of color schemes for these ones. Um, don't know if any of them are licensed or not, but yeah, you get a whole heap of, uh, of various different color schemes for this one, which is kind of interesting. So it gives you all sorts of flavors. Not that you can actually fly to any of these other countries at the moment, like, you know, you're not going to Indonesia anytime soon. Uh, we've got the A320, so the slightly, so the A321 is the big, the big, uh, big one of the family. The A320 is sort of like the mid-range one. Um, so for those who fly ESP will know, the A3, of course, the A321 was default in FSX, but A320 is the uh, is one of the default aircraft here in Aerofly Flight Sim 2. Again, a whole heap of variety of different airline colours are included. The ASG-29, of course, is the uh, second uh, of the gliders here, so this one's uh, more of a competition uh, glider, um, and a, a racing glider, so this one's got the bigger wingspan and a lot more lighter, so this could be rather kind of cool to fly if you're into the gliders. And of course, uh, we have to, we can't, we can't go uh, have a flight sim without uh, turboprops. So uh, for the uh, for Airflies uh, chosen, IPEX have chosen to have the Air King Air C90, which is the bubby version of the the baby version of the King Air. So it's a smaller, lighter, uh, but still stupidly powerful with its uh, its uh, twin uh, PT6s. Always love the always love King Airs just for the simple fact they're all over overpowered. Uh, this is the GTX version, which has got the full glass cockpit, um, and uh, we might have a look at that one a little bit later on because uh, as I said, I'm always a fan of the old turbo props. So with Camel, classic of aviation history, of course, uh, you know, and uh, and great to see uh, see the he keeping the biplane era going with two biplanes in this one, and of course the classic one is this one as well. So it's very interesting, rather disturbing history, you know. Felt a disturbing history down the bottom here, but yeah, there we go. Just telling us that it's difficult and dangerous to fly, so it'll be interesting to see how it's modelled in uh, in the side of the flight sim. And of course, it wouldn't be a flight simulator without having a 747-400 in it, would it? it? It really wouldn't. So, yes, yes, you can fly a jumbo jet. That's fine, yes, you do have it. Have fun. Uh, again, full range of, uh, of colour schemes here. Ooh, interesting that they've got a Saudi one in there. 
I've always liked the Saudi color scheme. I just, I just like it. Uh, Korean, EVA Air are in there. Uh, Delta. By the way, yeah, it is actually, though, for those, it's not EVA Air. It's EVA Air. That's actually how you're supposed to say it. Um, just FYI, having traveled on them before myself. But yeah, there you go. So you get a whole heap of deliveries for your 747-400 for those of you who love your tube liners. All right. But let's run with the Cessna 172 for now. All right. Let's go on with the location stuff. So location essentially means that this is where you can choose your airport and where you're going. Okay, couple of things I want to show here. All right, now I'm not sure whether this is going to be the way it's going to be forever. I'm not sure, but they've left themselves some room open for the future. So this is where you start. So you're in the southwestern US. Okay, each one of these blue dots is your airport. So there's 150 airports have been modeled. And these, these stretch along the coastline here, so through California. Um, also out to the Grand Canyon as well. So we can do a Grand Canyon run out here and it goes all the way out to Monument Valley and Chinle Municipal. Um, that's as far as it goes. Now, you can possibly see here that you've got a slightly shaded version here. So sort of where it sort of goes from the brown to this, the plain green. You can sort of see where the change is here. So this is the edge of the scenery. So you can travel beyond here. In fact, this actually does have the whole world. You can actually fly through the whole world. You can actually choose to move yourself into the whole world. Um, but we'll get to why you don't do that very uh, after we've gone for uh, our first couple of flights. So uh, for now, let's uh, set uh, back up get uh, an airfield here. Where was I? I was down here somewhere, wasn't I? Long Beach. Alright, now, when choosing your starting location, so you can just sort of tap the ground and there you go and just choose your altitude. So, you know, you can drag your airplane up to, you know, wherever you want to go or whatever you want to do, that's fine. Or, if you want to start at an airfield, you can either start at a runway start position, you can start on approach to a, to a on final, in the, uh, in the groove, in the uh, final approach uh, line, or you can start at the single parking spot that is available at each airport, which is a bit ludicrous considering that LAX is one of the airports here. Anyway, so yeah, that's uh, that's the location summary. Navigation. So navigation essentially is allows you to actually, so you can actually do a bit of flight planning here. So it's an interesting way of doing it. It's a start finish kind of idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to go. Select our depart so to to do your route. So let's go. Uh, select our departure airport. Is we're going to depart from Long Beach. We're going to depart out on runway. Let's see. We're going to head north. So let's go. By the way, it doesn't tell you any weather information. You're going to get this. So let's do a runway uh, seven left departure. All right, and it automatically puts the, interesting enough, it puts the uh, waypoint marker. So it's got some navigational data going on in the background here. It does. All right, so from there, we then go. All right, so we want to go, where do we want to travel to? Let's travel to the SLI VOR. Cool. Then from there, let's, okay, well, just as an example, We'll just use this example now. We might fly a different course in another video. And then we're going to fly to... We're going to land at John Wayne. So we're going to click on John Wayne and we're going to come in on a runway to arrival. So we just lose the little landing aeroplane there. And that's our arrival. So it'll then put in... So it's got data in there. It's got navigational data in there because it's actually placed then the approach paths and actually put everything in there that you need. So that you want to do the, you know, as you go to the SLI VOR, then you're going to these waypoints in order to come in and land on runway uh, 02 left. So there you go. And it does list all your ILS information in there as well. So yeah, okay. Navigation flight planning is actually quite simple. Very, it's quite simple and fairly easy and an easy thing to grasp. You can't use the intersections but you can use VORs and NDBs. Alright, so that wraps up the navigation section. Last one that we've got on the main menu here of course is conditions. Alright, so conditions again, this is very basic. So you've got time of day, 
Now, the time of day is all set in UTC, so just be aware of that. If you put this at, you know, 8 a.m., you know, 8 a.m., it's not going to be early morning in San Francisco. It's going to be midnight, okay? So just just, just be aware of that. So if you want to have 8 a.m. and uh, in your area, there in uh, in this part of the U.S., then you are going to want to be setting it at around about eight hours ahead of that. So we're going to be wanting to set it to about 1,600 kind of thing. So this is interesting. Good to see they're using UTC and you know, making you think about it. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to be... It, I, I'm hoping that means there's going to be things for the future coming up here. All right, wind. Yep. So if you were expecting real live updated weather, you're not going to find it. You're not. Okay, so this is an odd sort of way of doing things. So you can actually... So everything from basically... This is zero knots all the way up to... I actually don't know how... I have no idea how fast the wind's going to go on this one. Uh, and then you can just sort of bring it through there. So let's just put a... Let's put a mid-strength wind in there. You can change the direction. So uh, let's have it come from the... Uh, let's have it come from the northeast. There we go. All right, turbulence. Um, so you can set how strong and how rough the air might be. Uh, so you can have it, you know, slide it all the way up or low. So we'll just set that. In. Yeah, we'll set it about there. Thermal activity. So this is probably going to be more important for the gliders. But this is a very mountainous region that they've modelled. So you know, we're going to put the thermal activity at fairly about medium, I think. All right, that looks good. And of course, clouds. So clouds. This is how we look at pretty. So we'll do reasonable good visibility. Uh, we'll do a very. What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to max out some of this cloud density. Don't know if it'll affect the. Uh, Put the cumulus cloud height fairly low, cloud density high, cloud height medium. There we go. So it's all slider based. Can you tell this is an iOS port? If you couldn't figure it out already, this is really an iOS port. It really is. Lots of sliders, lots of things where you would just normally put your finger and just drag it. So, you know, yeah. But okay, keeping keeping an open mind. It, as I said, it's the, some of the control stuff was good. Was good. All right. That's a summary of this one. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, and you've got the about. So this is where you can learn about the guys at IPAX um, and all the credits and stuff like that with some of the programming and stuff come by. Very, it's a small production team, so you know there you go. Um, though it seems that they've uh, got some stuff from Aerosoft and Milvis, um, which I dare say would be some of the 3D models because uh, we'll see them in a moment. But 3D models are absolutely gorgeous. They really are. So. Before we jump into a flight school lesson, I am going to re re go back on what I said, but before we jump into a flight school lesson, let's just have a look at a 3D model for a moment. So remember we've got the, uh, the Cessna 172, so we're going to use that, and now let's go start. Alright, so quickly let's have a look at a couple of things uh, in here. So the cockpit, this it doesn't start cold and dark, it's always engine running. And as far as I know, there's uh, you can sort of shut it down and turn it off, uh, and you can restart it if you wish, but only on some aircraft, not all. So just be aware, there's no keyboard shortcut to be able to uh, to change the to set the uh, engine going. It's uh, it is a manual stuff, which is kind of good. All right, so we're in the 172 here. Let's have a look. Uh, first of all, let's have a look at the outside, and this is what I want to talk about. So the modelling is absolutely beautiful it really is it, it, it like the modeling is quite stunning and this is across the board like visually this external model is absolutely beautiful it really is and we'll have a look at some of the aircraft as uh, other aircraft as well but the, the the visual model is just simply stunning there is no two ways about it there really isn't We'll just go through some of the other external views here. Da, da, da. So you can zoom out, zoom in. Um, so it's all controlled using, so you can control the view with the mouse. Um, that clipping just then was a bit disturbing, so it shows that that's something going on underneath here, but anyway. Uh, so again, like most simulations, it's a bit of a layer. Okay, so as I said, the the visual model is quite stunning. Um, so you know, drop the we'll drop the flaps there. 
So very smooth animations, very, very high quality model, and the reflections are quite nice. Um, interestingly enough, you know I was saying you can't change the simulation rate, but you can change the time of day. So you can see how the visuals change um, on the aircraft as well. And that actually can make a huge difference. Like it changes, you know, it's got the shadowing right, and you get that beautiful sort of dusk, um, just got a glow to it as well, to the sky, that's quite nice. So, you know, I'm quite impressed by, I'm very, I'm well, not quite impressed, I'm very impressed by the 3D model, I really am. But of course, uh, we shall see more about it once it's in the air. So, here we go, that's the one. All right, you know what, I'm gonna, we're gonna have a look at another, we're gonna have a look at another one. Have a look at the cockpit first before we go and have a look at another model. All right, clickable cockpit. So, the 172 is, you know, it is primarily fairly clickable. So you, uh, again, you've got your radio stack here, so everything is in the right place where it should be. Now, there's no pressure changes for weather that I can see so far. You can adjust your barometer, uh, but there's no uh, settings for it. So what we'll do here, but you, all your avionics are fully functional. So let's set up a... Uh, So this is all fully functional. Well, maybe not fully functional. Uh, so yeah, it's a lot of the clip. Well, some of the dial, some of the knobs don't turn. So let's have a look here. So we've got our uh, we've got our ADF here. So yeah, everything is fully clickable, like, yeah, well, not everything, but yeah, your main things are going to be fully clickable. You've got your DME receivers here, your comm radios and your nav radios. Now, there's no real need for comm radios, as uh, there's no ATC, there's no AI, tra AI traffic, and there's no multiplayer. So, no real need for the comm radios, but nav radios, the nav uh, system does work, so uh, the, there is a lot of VORs and the ILSs, they all work and you can receive those, and uh, we'll have a look at those as well uh, in a future video, but uh, it, it all does change, again, usual dual stage dials, and then swap to bring it actually to make it to the active channel, so that's cool, that works. Now. When I was saying before with the autopilot, the autopilot does work. From what I can tell so far, though, the nav system definitely is either not implemented completely yet, or not. It's definitely not in all. Uh, it's definitely not in all aircraft. Um, there's no way to set it to follow the plan. It's uh, basically it's following. It doesn't follow a GPS flight plan. It follows the. It follows the heading that's set. Um, haven't tried to do it with uh, an approach back course yet, but you know. That might be something we'll uh, we'll check out shortly, but at least you know the nav radios do work, and the autopilot is basic but does work. All right, let's back it up here. So you've got a couple of nice views get preset, so you can see that, and this is kind of cool. The fact that you know you get your 3D model of yourself uh, is actually included in the cockpit as well. So while you're here, you can actually look over and see yes, and they also respond, the 3D model does actually respond to the control inputs that you do. Which is kind of cool. I like that. AD is pretty cool. Now if you're wondering what those big yellow things are in the front, that's what I was talking, telling you about before. That's the approach guides. So that's those, you know, those visual guides. So they, if you've got to set to all, they show up in all the airports that they're programmed for. If you set it to active, that means it'll only show the active one that you're using in as part of a flight plan, uh, or none, they all disappear, which is nice. Okay, all right. Let's go for a, a quick flight, and let's see what everything's like. All right, so now what we'll do here is we'll bring up our moving map. So moving map display comes up here. Uh, unfortunately, you can't undock this uh, again legacy of being a uh, an, an app, an, an, an iOS app, and not a, uh, a true sort of PC design sim, uh, is the fact that, you know, it will, uh, it doesn't allow you to undock this and move it to another window. 
very frustrating. Just throwing it out there for somebody who's used to being able to put stuff on a second monitor. Really frustrating. Anyway, uh, but yes, there you go. This is a moving map display. This is pop that's there. Um, you've got a moving map display here as well. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to overlay, and although it's got buttons there, they don't seem to do anything. So maybe that's going to be planned for future integration. I don't know. All right. Let's, uh, first of all, let's uh, depart, let's uh, taxi out, and let's depart, and then let's uh, try off one of the, uh, one of the uh, training missions. Alright. Now, you can't adjust the mixtures, which I noticed was a bit odd. Um, there's one thing I noticed that you can't change. You can't adjust mixtures. Hmm, could be a potential problem with some of the piston engine aircraft in here, but never mind. Alright, let's uh, taxi out. Now the airport's uh, somewhat detailed. Um, you know, the airports do sort of have some airport detailing. There's no guides to take you to the runway you want to go to. you just kind of got to uh, guess your way there. So we're going to uh, taxi down, so we're running... Uh, Departing on, uh, I think it was 07, I think we were departing, wasn't it? So we'll take us, it'll give us a chance to taxi down and taxi past some of the uh, some of the scenery here. Now, first thing I noticed with uh, the way the aircraft handle is the handling of the aircraft on the ground feels like I'm in like a, a, a slalom. Like a, like a downhill ski slalom or something because you slip and slide all over the place. So you know maybe maybe they're you know they were uh, they were channeling Tokyo Drift or something when uh, when they were doing this. I'm not sure, uh, but yeah, you get some really interesting sort of like for example, I'm not going very fast at all, and yet I can do something like that. So I kind of got a problem with the way that handles on the ground. Uh, just throwing it out there. Uh, but yes, anyway. Uh, so yes. Otherwise, yeah, not too bad. Um, taxiways, reasonably clear. Yeah, you've got all this beautiful, you got all this static traffic. You've got UPS over there. You've got a lot of static traffic. So, C-130s over there. I'll go check them out. Uh, but no AI. So, no, nothing, nothing in the AI sort of world for this one. So, it's, it's, it's... It's a very, it's a very dead world. Um, it is just you, just chilling, um, but no actual sort of uh, interaction with any, with anything other than your environment. And even your environment, as I said, it's it's very, very static. So as we uh, taxi down here to our uh, departure runway, we'll be able to uh, see some of these uh, static aircraft over here. So. LAX has got, by the way, LAX has got a couple of static, um, a couple of static A380s. Uh, otherwise, you've got all sorts of static aircraft kicking around here. It looks like, looks like, uh, yep. But, uh, where's it there? Oh, is that a C5 I see hiding over there? That looks like Gulfstream to me. In terms of the airport mod, <coughs> in terms of the airport modelling, um. Yeah, it, there's a, as you can see, there's a lot here. Yeah, that is. I'm going to go taxi underneath this thing. Hello. Well, yeah, not bad for a medium poly static model. Not bad. No, not amazing. You know, not bad either. Um, it's really designed for sort of like touch or mouse inputs for moving the view uh, because it's very jumpy when it comes to using the uh, the hat switches and, and the uh, the keys. Still, not too bad. Anyway, what was I think? Oh yeah, so overall, it, it yeah, it, it's looking all right. Yeah, as I said, it it some of it looks quite good. There's no ATC, um, as I said before, there's, there's no ATC interaction, there's no real interaction with anything, really. Um, you just sort of fly around and do your thing. Yeah, which, which I've got no problem with, I, I like just flying, you know, it's, it's nice and relaxing. Uh, so, we're coming up on our, we're just, we're just shooting across what probably should be, you know, I'm just 
just making my own taxiway here, never mind that. One thing, one good thing about having those guys is it does help you with, you know, figuring out where shit is at the airport because otherwise you just have no idea where you are. Again, legacy of not having like a, you know, top down, there is no top down view. Alright, so as we line up on the runway, let's uh, run through uh, some of the views as well. Alright, so as you may have noticed uh, here on the, uh, on the side here. So on the side here, we've got a couple of different uh, view things as well. So this one is your up button. So this one just simply jumps you up uh, a thousand feet. That is what that one, every time you click that does. Here is sort of, again, legacy of a touchscreen device. So we've got a tower view, we've got flyby view, we've got external view. So, tower view. So you can see us there, line up there. Flyby view. External view, and you go through the different type thing we've got. Oh, we go here. So every aircraft has a HUD. Yes, it does. So whether you have one or not, whether your aircraft is supposed to have a HUD or not, your aircraft will have a HUD. All right. So this is just the external view with no 3D model. Chase view, tail view, fixed follow view. Cockpit. View. This is one of the. This is actually one of the cockpit views, by the way. This side view here. Uh, then we've got, and then we just go through the copy views which we were cycling through before. So, view wise, yep, couple of viewpoints, interesting ones, but there you go. Alright, let's, uh, let's depart. So, we're going to uh, drop in notch flaps. Bring up, bring push in the throttle. back on the stick and there we go she leaps off the ground which is yeah, not quite right for a Cessna but still not too bad sounds aren't too bad now this is what I was talking about before so I'm pressing and holding the trim button or trim down but it's, it'll only do it when I actually press the button which is kind of frustrating all right Let's get our uh, let's get our autopilot. Let's see how the autopilot goes for this one. All right. Let's do a two thousand feet altitude. All right. Back on the throttle a bit. Heading. Now what we might do is now let's uh, test some VOR stuff here. So what we can do is we uh, here's go. We go back to our navigation page. So this gives so uh, we can give us a summary of our flight plan here. So we're going to SLI. So we can click on SLI, and it's one one five decimal seven. Okay. So let's uh, tune our, uh, our VOR. And there it is, and it works fine. We're three. Three nautical miles from it. It's calibrating the speed there, and there it is. And it looks like the nav receive input from there which is good okay so nav works not for GPS but nav works for the radio so that you can use your nav part of your autopilot 
that's good, I like that. But of course we're going to be, uh, now it'll be interesting to see if it, uh, yeah, yep, and it models the confusion because I'm over the top of it now. So while we're flying here, let's uh, have a look at the scenery. Right. Does that view answer your question? You've got lots of trees. You can see that it's all photo real. And that looks like that should be an airport. Let's just, uh... Oh yeah, nope, so... It's an airport. That's not an airport. Cool. Okay, cool. Let's, let's roll with that. Anyway, so... Basically, these guys just seem to have basically taken Google Maps and dropped it onto here. Um... I'm not calling that high def. I'm really not. Like, don't get me wrong, the slow times and the frame rates on this are stunningly amazing, but that looks horrible. I'll be honest, that looks terrible. Anyway, um, sorry, as we've flown over that, so we need to uh, get back on course now. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to head out that way. Nav only works sometimes when it feels like it. Interesting. So uh, okay, we're gonna we're gonna just roll with heading there. So anyway, uh, so okay, so the nav system partially works. Doesn't work completely. That's interesting to know. Uh, alrighty, but. Back onto the the scenery here and the the surrounding scenery. <clears throat> so, I'm not calling that high def. That that's atrocious quality. And this is the high resolution area. Th this is the area you're supposed to be flying in. Like, you know, this is supposed to be the one that's done absolutely amazingly. It looks incredible to fly in. And you know what, probably from 5,000, 6,000 feet this wouldn't look so bad, but when you do low flying like what you do in a Cessna, this doesn't look so good. Lots of trees, but it's flat as a pancake otherwise. And that loses a lot for me, that really does. So, yeah. Yeah, we've got those you know, buildings uh, immediately around the airport. But that's kind of it, um, and it's a bit of a shame that that's the way it is. That that is a real shame. It really is, because it's kind of like I think they've missed out on a brilliant opportunity here. Because otherwise, like this cloud is looking absolutely like the cloud dynamics is absolutely beautiful. The aircraft are incredibly beautifully modelled, like absolutely stunning. Like I just. Yeah, the 3D modeling of this uh, of this aircraft is just, it's absolutely amazing. It's mind-blowing, is what it is. Let me just check that I'm back on course there. Yep, good. We'll intercept our next uh, point. Next uh, point. Good, gives me a chance to talk more about this. So, you know, as I said, the 3D model is beautiful. It is absolutely incredible. It really is. I can't say enough praise about it. It's just, it's stunning. It's incredibly stunning. Flight dynamics. The Cessna, as I said, the ground handling shocking. Flight dynamics so far, not too bad. Can't change the mixture. That's annoying. Uh, which is going to make it a little bit unrealistic. Shadow of the aircraft on the ground. Nice. And, you know, we're just going to go through, change the time of day as we go through here. Now, 
that is a seamlessly smooth transition and that is absolutely stunning that really is like look how beautiful that is seriously that is just absolutely stunning the lens there. yeah so Aeroflow's got a few things right like they've got the sky coloring right they've got the clouds nice they just need to work on making and also I don't get this I don't understand this so this is a feature of Google Maps where you've got like the town name or the suburb name when you when you look at it yeah apparently it's through here so what the hell like seriously what the hell were they thinking so yeah little weird little strange still not sold on on the the way there on the ground just anyway probably should uh get ready because we're just going to be back to this one now i do need to find where's my landing light switch there we go and yep landing light is now on <clears throat> so yeah 3D modeling and the way they're doing some of the sky stuff, that's pretty impressive, but overall, this should not be called a simulator. It really shouldn't. This should be called an arcade. It, it's got potential, I think. It's got potential. Let's uh, let's jump in. Let's do this one. Okay, I'm going to turn off the autopilot. Now, you can see here. So you see how um, as we turn towards the uh, airfield here, see how some of those uh, one line of those boxes, approach boxes, has gone green. So that's because we selected a runway approach. So uh, we shall see how this goes. This is, you, you can sort of see the way that that light's just reflecting on the the, the texture of the inside of the aircraft. That, it, it, the, the 3D modeling is amazing. Just a shame about the rest of the sim. All right, and is that the uh, the approach path there? The box things, these box things are sort of like they, they. Funny feeling, actually, though, we're in they're in FSX as well. I funny, I think this is something that's never normally used. But I'm funny feeling they actually might be in FSX as well. But you know, it's a good way to teach you sort of uh, how to recognise the correct approach paths and stuff like that. They don't 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 imagine that you're going to have these in real life.
groove. And we're just going to take our time, because this is apparently a long approach. But you know, that, that smooth transition as we uh, saw before when, they were, when we were changing times, like, that was a very smooth transition of just, you know, getting the, uh, the just, just changing the time of day and changing the whole sky colours. Like, that was a really impressive change, and just how smooth it was. And we'll see as we see uh, as we get close to the airport, we'll start to see some buildings pop in. As I said, they, they've modelled the airport and the airport buildings and, you, you know, sort of immediate surrounds of airports, but everywhere else is they've got a few trees, but that's kind of it. Second launch flaps in and got the uh, anticipated nose bump. So yep, we're just keeping it on, keeping on the glide slope, a little bit high. So yeah, okay, okay, FDs better. The just, that initial takeoff was just horrifying. So as you can see, like buildings start popping in just when you're on final for that uh, for for the airports, but that's it. Like they're in the immediate surrounds of the airport, and that's it. That's all the only places where the um, where buildings seem to be. Finish that approach a bit high. Lots of reuse of uh, static aircraft there. for a nice gentle landing Whoop. not so gentle a little bit bouncy that one it shouldn't have been that bad so okay not too shabby I said visually absolutely stunning like visually absolutely something it is absolute eye candy it really is um everything else not so sure on all right well that's a first little quick little flight let's uh, as promised uh what we'll do is we will have a look at the uh we will have a look at the flight um their flight training we will have a look at that and then uh, we might use uh we might have another video to have a look at uh the other aircraft that are available for it this one through. Yeah, you see the airports are quite well modelled, it's just everything else isn't. That's annoying, anyway. Alright, we're gonna go, well, let's, let's just park here by the fire shall we? So, you know, like, you know, nice lighting models in the buildings. Okay. One one last thing we'll check before we do the flight school. I, I want to do one last thing because I think we need to have a look at the we need to have a look at some night lighting. Let's have a look at some night lighting. Alright, so to do that, well, let's do this. Okay. So we're gonna wipe erase our plan. Now we're going to location. 
All right, so let's go over the now. What's going to be illuminated in the middle of the night? It should be downtown LA. It should be you know bright as, shouldn't it? So let's move our aircraft there. So just the heading. Let's have you? Let's have you be flying north, and we'll start you there. All right. So this area should be pretty bright. It should be pretty bright at night. So we're going to make it about 3,000 feet. All right. Let's choose something. Uh, let's choose something a little different. Let's uh, grab ourselves the extra. All right. All right. Okay, so yep, okay, cool, city at night. <clears throat> now this should light up like a Christmas tree once the sun goes down. Okay, let's take the sun down. Uh, uh, um, LA just have a power blackout? Of course, I picked an aircraft which has no interior lighting, didn't I? Yeah, of course I did. Okay, so... That's not cool. Basically, then, that's a real shame, because... During the day, it's virtually... So, if you like day flying, this, this is great. If you don't, then... That's horrifying. Absolutely nothing. Bring the sun up and sun down. Sun up, sun down. I said, love the transitions between the day sort of things, but that lack of night lighting that's criminal. I know this is early access, I'm probably being harsh here, but seriously, no night lighting, and you're still only retreating into this? Really? Really? What's wrong with you? Ugh. Okay, alright. That's That experiment was interesting and very telling, so okay, we're going to leave that experiment now. And see, okay, so again, this is going to show you, so I just want to show you, it wasn't just because we were in a, an outer regional area. This is like downtown LA now, and... We still have nothing. We've got trees, but we've got nothing else. It's dead flat. That's wrong. That shouldn't be. Yep. I have a problem with that. I do. Okay. Oh, cool. We've got aerobatic maneuvers on the front there. Yeah, nice. Okay, so, enough of that. Enough of that tomfoolery. Alright, let's uh, back out of here. Alright, so that's been my first little uh, flight here in uh, in Aerofly FS2 Flight Simulator. Um, I had planned on putting the flight school, sort of, the couple of introductory flight school lessons in this first video, but I've actually decided I'm going to break the video here. We're going to come back in a second episode and have a look at some of the uh, flight school uh, videos, and we're going to have a look at some of the other aircraft. So join me again soon uh, for the second installment of my first impressions of Aerofly FS2 Flight Simulator. So thanks very much for joining me for this first flight. Don't forget, as always, to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying these videos and want to see more. And of course, as always, you can catch up with me and all the things I'm up to between videos by finding me on Facebook and on Twitter. Just search Number Wing 24 All right, folks, thanks very much for watching. Take care, safe skies to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.